So my name is Håkan Enqvist and I'm the CEO of Amplicure and also one of the founders uh, of the company. And we are also listed at First North, so I do the same disclaimer uh, slide. So what we do, uh, uh, our purpose is to, together with partners, we intend to help millions of smokers switch to oral nicotine pouches, as well as to significantly improve pain treatment while reducing the risk of abuse for millions more. Okay. So we are a holding company. Uh, we were actually we were started as a pharma with uh, abuse deterrent formulations of opioids uh, about eight years ago. And uh, our basic, I will go through roughly what we do, uh, what our technology base is. And then I will go into the two subsidiaries we have, Amplicon, which is working with nicotine and uh, oral nicotine pouches, and then spend most of the time on what uh, the subsidiary called Amplifarm that is working with opioids. Um, yes, and we have a head headquarters in Uppsala. And I'm also working at the university as a professor at the same time. So our base technology is it's what we call a bioceramic or a biocement. And the reason why we can even sit here today is that we have a skeleton. Yes, and the skeleton is based on calcium phosphate. Calcium phosphates, it's, uh, it's a ceramic material and it's a cement. It's a cementious material that we could, people like myself, I'm a material scientist, we can make those materials as a cement, similar to what you do at home if you would like to mold a stair. You buy cement at Bauhaus, you mix it with one scoop of cement, three scoops of sand, in with water and you mix. And then it sets. That's called a chemically bonded ceramic or a bio, uh, it's a cement. We do the same but with a bio, biologically acceptable materials like calcium sulfate, it's called a gypsum, or calcium phosphate that sets and harden to hydroxyapatite, the same as us, bones and teeth. So, what we do, I will see if I can explain. We take one part of this, it's a bioceramics, what we make. Uh, the active substance, uh, in our case it's an opioid or buprenorphine. Excipients, well, that could be in the nicotine case, it's uh, taste. But it could be other things that, uh, if it were something that you would like to trace through the stomach, it could be radiopaque. Okay, for, you see what, so that could be an excipient. And we add a liquid, we like water, so it's a water, we like to be water-based. And when that sets, uh, it forms like small Swiss cheese. We can form it to more or less any shape. We like to do granules, but it could be molded to more or less any shape you would like to have, small tablets. And within the pore system, we have the active ingredient. And by doing that, we get a controlled release. And the start of the company was to make these uh, abuse deterrent to avoid crushing and snorting and to avoid putting into a tea, uh, tea bags, you know, or put it into a drink. That type of, uh, to be able to re give an opioid for controlled release without having the possibility to rapidly extract it for drug abuse. That was the start of the company, and that's what we're doing also for buprenorphine. We started with oxycodone and fentanyl. That was in the beginning of the opioid crisis. And it was a, from FDA, a more or less like a competition to be able to develop products that could have abuse deterrent claims. Uh, what happened, uh, both that the, uh, the uh, opioid crisis exploded, and you know about the Purdue Pharma and Endo, and there were also companies that had other projects that went all the way to, all the way to, with oxycodone and fentanyl, all the way to FDA. And one of the, on the panels said, but I can just take two tablets. You see, then it's difficult to, with the abuse, you can just take two or three, you get the same amount. So I will go through slow, uh, what is now happening uh, with the opioids slowly in the US. This is more of an American uh, project than a European. So, um, this you might have seen, it's all, uh, it's on uh, Disney Channel and you've seen it on CNN and so on. The opioid crisis is ongoing in North America. 
uh, where over 2.5 million people have severe opioid use di uh, disorder. Um, so, one solution, and there is a talk uh, or a company, Farmnova, presenting after me that have another uh, take on this, and there is yet another one. I see that Biostock have made a plan on <laughs> how this came <laughs> come by. Okay, so there is, on the opioid side, there is the fentanyl and the oxycodone that is already mainly being taken towards uh, acute and chronic pain. If one gets uh, addicted, the, the one way to treat that is by subscribing buprenorphine. Today, there is a movement of also subscribing buprenorphine directly for chronic pain. And why is that? It has to do that buprenorphine as a molecule uh, doesn't give the high, and it has a low bioavailability in, through the stomach. So it's given either as an injection patch or as a, a film. So it's difficult per se to abuse. So it's a movement in, in the US from oxycodone fentanyl towards buprenorphine and we are developing a new uh, controlled release formulation targeting that. And the reason to this uh, is all, the buprenorphine is also that it has less side effects. Okay. And so, so the products that are already approved on the market in the US, it's for acute pain by injection or chronic pain, then it's um, transdermal or this th films. And then for addiction medicine, there is even more injection, mainly injections, but then we also have Swedish companies doing implants, um, Camurus, or sublingual, uh, also for addiction. Medicine, if you look at those companies, they are also now applying for chronic pain indication. Top companies, you know, and I also mentioned just briefly, there are, of course, other treatments uh, being developed for pain. For example, cold treatments, um, molecules from chili peppers, there are molecules coming from venom, um, and uh, there are also others being presented today also more towards the, uh, um, how we experience pain. So what we do then, we do a sublingual tablet, no, or a tablet that you placed, uh, that we have a mucosa, uh, the uptake is through the mucosa. So it, it's, we put it as a buckled tablet, and it's placed for up to five hours, and then give a controlled release. So it's not an immediate release, it's not injection, it's not a patch. Um, it gives for the patients and caregivers more control. We do a tamper resistant formulation and also buprenorphine per se is less prone to be uh, um, misused. And we do an extended release. And also one benefit of doing controlled release in the way we do it is that there is less buprenorphine needed to be than compared to the patches. There need, as you know, with those who have been working with patch, there needs to be a lot of buprenorphine within the patch to get it through the skin. Uh, yes, and of course, then these are just some of the uh, abuse deterrent um, properties that we are working towards uh, to reduce the also for buprenorphine, as we did with the oxycodone and fentanyl in the past. The current state of this, we are in the clinical phase. Uh, we have uh, the phase one study started. We are, have a partner search started for product development, co-development and manufacturing uh, for the future. And then depending on the data, we might do a, a reformulation uh, or optimization of the formulation. We, we don't have the data from the study yet. And we need to do much more market uh, intelligence and the clinical program for the next stages. So by doing that by key opinion leaders and the payers in the US. I will say a few words about also about our um, company Amplicon, where we are working with the same type of bioceramics to deliver nicotine, and that is for harm reduction. And the Ceramics that I talked about, one benefit that is, this is now not abuse deterrent formulation, 
Uh, but we, were, we have found out that we can make small oral pouches, uh, white pouches, um, with uh, our own patent protection, form harm reduction and um, reduction of uh, smoking. And the, the in entry point to this is that in the world, outside Sweden and the center part of America, people are not used to putting a big pouch under the lip. They would like to have something smaller that cannot be seen. And thereby, we have developed a very, very small, it's one fourth of the size, but deliver as, as a bigger white snooze. And we have our CEO sitting up in the corner, Thomas Hammargren, he could show you later on. So this is what we have come furthest on when it comes to development. It, that is actually a product ready for scale up and future launch. Um, and we're also contemplating to start that as an NRT product. That means um, that could be sold on pharmacies then. And one important part of this is, of course, we have a very strong IP, and those that is within this field is, uh, would know, know that that's one of the key things within that area that is very, very rapidly growing in the world at the moment. And uh, so the world is moving towards oral uh, nicotine, and you might today actually, I think, was launched that Philip Morris have been able to acquire Swedish Match. And one of the key reasons to doing that is uh, connected to the white pouches. We have a very experienced uh, uh, team connected to the company, both covering uh, consumers and uh, especially then pharma. And a small but very agile team working in Uppsala and in Malmö. That's me. Thank you. Thank you. So let's start with asking the questions uh, from the audience. Any questions? So I'm going to start then. We had a question earlier from the audience to another company about measuring pain. How do you do that when you work with your pain uh, relief medication? Oh, oh. <laughs> that's, uh, that's, uh, I <laughs> it's <laughs> Okay, but pain is a feeling, yeah. as you know, and we're exactly. not good on measuring feelings. So I'm not going into that. So we're measuring in, the, the, in our study, yeah. we're measuring in the amount of uh, buprenorphine in the blood. It's a PK study. Okay. Yes. So we're not measuring pain in that sense. <laughs> but that's a very intellectually very, very yeah, interesting subject. Uh, so which I, yes, no, that's, Thank I refrain you. from answering. Okay, <laughs> that's okay. So anyone else? Um, then I'm going to go and talk about Amplicon. I'm a bit curious because there's a lot of companies right now manufacturing these nicotine pouches. Yes. How would you say that you differ from other companies doing the same thing? Uh, uh, we're, uh, we are differing both because we are actually able to deliver very, very small pouches that delivers as a bigger one. The other, if you're into that field, the ones doing small uh, normally releases everything very, very rapidly. It's like five minutes and then you need to take it out. Ours, could you, you can have that for 30 minutes and longer. And we believe that that could open up for actually all over the world to be able to use white patches. And the other one is, of course, IP. We feel uh, proud that we are doing something that is different than from what others are doing. Uh, so we're not really in the same field, and we can also deliver taste very, for a very long time, which we then believe that we can be able to exploit into other areas. We haven't started with that, but for example, everyone who tried sugar-free chewing gum, it, compared to hubba bubba that we used to do when we were small, it, that delivers taste for a very long time. <laughs> and there is a, 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 a part of that as well that could be a new area for us that we learned from have nothing to do with your question, but it's more of a future opportunity. <laughs> so yes. that could be a next step. Yes. Bubble so, gum. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. Okay. Bubba bubba. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, so Ampli 03, are you? Is the goal to outlicense that candidate or? Yes. 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 And yes. what kind of partner are you looking for then? Yeah. We're, I mean, at the moment, we would like to co have a co-development partner since we're at phase one. And we need to do more market intelligence, and next we need to do more clinical studies. So we need a co-development partner and a future license partner. So that's what we will be looking for. We are just starting that work, so it's still very early business development. 
And have you noticed some interest or how sure, is the Sure, sure. I suppose many of the other companies here in, in early stage when you expose, there is uh, in the pharma world a certain range of companies that look very early. And, and of course we have seen a few of those. And we've been talking a lot about the financial climate here before today. Yes. And uh, so I'm wondering how is your financial status? Will you be doing a rights issue soon or...? No, at the moment we just uh, we did uh, roughly what the panel said. We talked to our present uh, owners and a few new, and we did uh, uh, debt uh, financing, um, Swedish kvittnings emission, uh, uh, just a few uh, uh, rough uh, a month ago. So we we did that. So at the moment, no. So you're all set for yes, now. Uh, <laughs> okay, yeah. you're lucky. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so do we have any audience questions over there? Hi, thank you for a good talk. Um, I'm curious about the application of, like, can you control the release? Yes. So that's how you, you know, can design drugs that are targeted for kids, female, men, that are, you know, different weights, so to say. Ah, you mean, uh, ah, you mean to, to do the dosing personalized? Exactly. Sure, that could be done, yes. It's not the way we do it today, we do one dose, but of course that could be done. It's relatively easy in this method to just to do to do the dosing specifically, sure. Would that be a sort of expensive no. uh, area to explore? No, not really. No. Thank you. No, it's a good idea. <laughs> Any more questions? So do you want to talk a bit more about the, com the competitive landscape for Amplio 3? Because it's a big market, I guess, but there's also a lot of competitors. Yes. Uh, yes and no. There are the competitors are you can place them both in the landscape of those doing new pain molecules or treatment uh, regimes. That's one. And then those targeting buprenorphine. In buprenorphine phase, I think I went through some of the biggest ones that we know about. It's those doing th the films for immediate release. Injection, uh, that's not really competitive to us. It's the one doing implants, like Camurus and others, and then the patch. But our niche, uh, so far, we don't know anyone doing exactly that. So uh, I, the, I, the opportunity is more of the movement and how fast that might go in the US to transform from oxycodone fentanyl towards buprenorphine, which we don't know how that, but that, that's, uh, I think, is the, the opportunity. Okay. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you.